Welcome back to The Grind. In this video, we're going to talk about the Eldritch Tier Warriors, the legendary warriors Yeti and Galdur. Now, there are other videos I'll be releasing with the other dragons, the other legendary dragons of this new tier. So check those out for more details. But in this video, we'll talk about these two legendary warriors. The first one we'll talk about is Yeti, the legendary ice warrior. And this one will have the breeding pairs Cerebrith at level 16 and Marlith, Marlis at level 12. Now let's talk about Yetin's spells. I know his Yetin, uh, he kind of looks like a Yeti. I kind of like that name. It's pretty cool. Anyway, so he will have Spell Flux, which is an active white two rage spell. We've seen this before, usually on sorcerers, uh, but I believe there are some warriors who may have had it in the past. Anyways, you activate it and it destroys a tower, which is automatically chosen prioritizing mages that will kill that tower and then deal damage to towers in the surrounding area um, but it's only a little bit of damage and it will only have a one second cooldown then we'll have blood fury an active blue one rage spell that will instantly grant three rage and slow the dragon's rage regeneration by 90 percent for four seconds and then when you destroy a tower while blood fury is active you'll heal for 20 percent of the modified hp and it will have a four second cooldown so when you use this spell you essentially increase by two rage but you need one rage in order to activate it the spell will last for four seconds and then four seconds after that you can use it again so every eight seconds you can use this spell to increase two rage then he'll have terror of peaks which is an active spell that cycles between abominable roar and abominable breath abominable roar is similar to griff's spell where but it does damage so this one will freeze all towers in range for 3.5 seconds and damage them for 4% of the dragon's modified HP and it will clear all projectiles that are in the air and then after this the towers that were frozen will take an additional 25% damage from all sources and then there's no cooldown after using this spell before you can use abominable breath which increases dragon's breath by 100% for 3 seconds and then there will be a five second cooldown following that before you can use Abominable Roar again. I'm a little bit disappointed with how short the increased breath damage is and how long it takes before you can use them again. But these are pretty powerful spells if you combine them together. And then he'll have the Ice Resist. So what you would do with Yetin is come around the corner, use Spell Flux, which would destroy any red mage there. And then you would use the Abominable Roar, which will freeze all initial super shots and mage shots if there are other mage towers. And then you will activate Abominable Breath. So the towers will be taking increased damage from your abominable breath which is also dealing increased damage and then you can use blood fury to use spell flux again if needed and after the five second cooldown you can again freeze towers which will be helpful on a long middle island but i don't think you'll really be able to benefit from that a second time on the short islands so I think Yetin actually seems pretty good on paper, but I'm a little bit worried that he won't be able to deal enough damage to overcome defenders, and that's because his increased breath damage is only 100%, and the additional 25% towers will take from after being frozen I don't think will be significant enough. However, um, maybe on equal tier bases or without defenders, he seems like a really fun and viable dragon. He has a spell, spell flux, to immediately destroy a tower. Then he has a spell to freeze super shots and ways to increase damage and ways to immediately regain rage as well as to restore health on destroying towers. And so a lot of good things going for Yet, and I think he would be a fun one to fly. And I'm sad to say I'm really far off because this is a, one of the warriors I might actually enjoy messing around with. Next, we're going to talk about Calder, which will be the legendary fire warrior. And he will be bred by Med Medesis and Marlis. And Medesis will have to be level 16, Marlis level 12. So Calder's spells will include Magnetic Assault, which is an active white zero rage toggle spell, which can be toggled on and off. While active, it will drain 0.5 rage per second and gain a shield that reduces all incoming damage by 30% and granting the dragon 150% increased breath damage with no cooldown. So you can toggle it on and off at will. This is very similar to Gig's toggle spell, just a little bit different in the details. I think this is a very valuable spell. 
The next spell is Slag Blast, an active white one rage spell that destroys a target tower which prioritizes mage towers and refunds one rage on cast. It will have a five second cooldown. So essentially, if you have one rage, you can use this spell and it will not cost you anything because you'll get that rage back. Then he will have Smokescreen, which is an active white one rage spell that will cloak the dragon for two seconds and cause the dragon to fly slower. And then when he uncloaks, the dragon will deal 6% of its modified HP as damage to the nearby towers and it will have a four second cooldown. So it's kind of nice that Warrior will have a cloak to avoid some damage and it's white. Uh, the bonus damage on uncloaking I don't think will be super impactful, but it will be hopefully a little bit beneficial in helping take out some of those towers. And then Blood Fury as well, which is that active blue one rage spell that costs one rage and grants three rage, so a net of two rage positive on using that spell. And then towers destroyed while it's active will grant health back to your dragon so for this dragon kind of similar in the fact that you come around and you use slag blast which is that white spell that will destroy a tower and you will remain full rage and even on a short island should be able to use it a second time and then you'll want to toggle on magnetic assault to help block some of the damage from the initial sh super shots as well as give you the increased damage to help destroy another tower and you can toggle it off if you need to between shots if you only want it active for defensively when the towers are attacking and then if it's defended or super shots go off you'll want to use smoke screen to avoid getting hit by either a stun or an ice flak or mage drain and that will slow you down briefly for two seconds you'll be cloaked and then upon uncloaking you'll do a little burst of damage and then it will have a cooldown unfortunately so then super shots would be able to hit this dragon after that but if you are left with one bar of rage you could use blood fury to restore some extra rage and continue using magnetic assault to increase your attack damage as well as decrease the damage that you take and of course um if you have enough rage by the time your five second cooldown on slag blast is up then you can use that again to help destroy a final tower this dragon I think will be pretty tanky because it has Magnetic Assault as well as the Blood Fury to allow some healing if you have the Rage to use it as well as being able to Cloak to avoid some damage but I think this dragon will struggle a little bit. I don't really see a great way for him to avoid being Mage Drained altogether if there is a defender that saves some super shots for after you uncloak whereas with yetin he can use spell flux and then freeze the towers to avoid the mage drains and then use spell flux again and then use blood fury to get back the rage that he lost that would destroy two mage towers and that would put him in a better position to maintain rage throughout the flight Overall, these dragons have a very cool design with unique spell sets, and I think that there is a little bit of variability with how you fly them and a little bit of room to play around with them. I wish I would be able to try them sooner than later, but it will be a very long time, unfortunately. So hopefully I can get some gameplay of some of these cooler dragons when the time comes so I can share it on my channel. If you do have them, I would love to see some gameplay and some opinions on what you think of them when you get them. But I think both of them have some potential. A little bit more impressed with Yetin's ability because I think he has a little bit more potential with how you rotate his spells to avoid taking uh, damage and mage drains as well as continuing to do a little bit extra damage more frequently. Once again, I will be releasing videos, hopefully at around the same time, on the remainder of the legendary dragons from the Eldritch season. I wanted to split them up because otherwise it would be a very long video and nobody wants to sit through half an hour of discussion on these six different dragons. It's a lot of information to share. So make sure to look out for those for some more information on the new dragons. As always, thank you all so much for your support for my channel. If you know players who are just starting out or players who have not seen my videos, I would really appreciate it if you shared it with them because I am limited in how much I can reach out to players that I don't know. And um, I am happy to report though that my channel has been growing quite significantly and I'm very happy with the progress. 
uh, but still about 60% or 65% of the people who watch my videos have not subscribed and I totally understand some people don't have accounts but um, I appreciate those who do subscribe because it definitely does show me the continued support and the continued desire to see my videos. So again, thank you all. Subscribe, subscribers or not, I really appreciate you watching my videos, sharing feedback, and helping me grow my channel and improve my content. See you in the next video.